In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to make custom YouTube thumbnails on Android fast and easy using our favorite thumbnail design apps for Android right now, including how to upload it to YouTube when you're done. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you grow an audience and scale your revenue with online video. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything I mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. So smartphones are an awesome tool for mobile video creation. And with the right apps, you can easily create YouTube thumbnails on your Android phone or tablet, meaning that you can actually shoot, edit, upload, and release YouTube videos without leaving your Android device. So right now we're gonna run through exactly how to do it, from designing a custom thumbnail for your new video to thumbnail upload in the YouTube app, all on your Android device, including the best design app that we've found on Android to get it all done quick and easy. Easy. And once we're done, I'll even hook you up with our free step-by-step -step guide that you can download to level up your Android video game next time you're shooting your videos as well. Okay, so getting to the apps, we have tried and tested an absolute ton of them. And our top pick right now for thumbnail creation on Android does go to Pixel Lab. This is an amazing app. There are so many features and so much control that you have over your thumbnail creation in here, but it's not too overwhelming for someone who is an absolute beginner to jump in as well. And you can use it and get great results with just the free version of this app. Yes, there are some ads and yes, you can pay to remove the ads, but even just using the free version with ads, you're going to get great results. Now, just before we jump into the app, the first thing that we need to do is to capture a few photos for us to use in our thumbnail creation. So if you've seen any of our primal video thumbnails, you'll know that they've all got my face on them somewhere, either smiling or pointing at something or holding up the product or the tool that we're going to be mentioning in the video. And all of this is to help people understand what the video is about by holding up that tool or that product and also to keep the branding consistent across all of our videos. So they'll all have my face on them. They'll all have some text three to five words usually, big bold text. So again, it's easy for people to understand what the video is about. And where it's relevant, we'll also include any pictures or logos or anything to help convey what the video is about to our potential viewers. So with the photos or the images that we capture to use in our thumbnails, I normally just do them at the time of recording, like here now, I'll just move across to the side and I'll just smile and point at stuff or pull silly faces. Am I thinking about something? Which is the best video editing software? I'd pull some silly faces, silly poses, just to give us a few different options when we get to creating our thumbnails. Okay, so here we are in Pixel Lab, and this is what you'll see when you first open it up. Now down the bottom, you've got some presets and templates and things that you can use. So if there's something you like the look of already down here, then that could be the starting place for you. But for us, we're gonna go to default and we are gonna customize this up from scratch. Okay, so first off, we're gonna get the size of the image right. So if you come up the top here to the three dots, the settings button, and then come down to image size. So when you hear this presets for all sorts of things, including a YouTube thumbnail, but what I'll suggest is that we actually up the resolution of this to be 1920 by 1080. So this is still gonna work for YouTube. It's still gonna be the same aspect ratio, but it's gonna give us a higher quality image at the end of it. So we're gonna go okay. And you can see now that we have a widescreen area to create our thumbnail image in. All right, so first off, let's add in the text that we want to include on our thumbnail here. So you can see we've already got a text box here. Let's double tap on that and let's replace the text with thumbnails and go OK. Now with that selected, if we come down the bottom to the A and then down the bottom here, you've got a heap of different ways that you can customize this up. So let's customize up first the font to get that looking something like a primal video font. There we go, meme font, that will do, and go okay. Now if you're after a specific font to match your branding, then you can upload your own custom fonts into here as well. Okay, so we've got our font. Now normally on our primal video text, we have a background. So we'll come across here to background. Let's enable that. And we can choose a static color or we can go a gradient. Let's go a static color. Now when we swipe down on this, we can customize that up. So we can choose one of their preset colors here and we can swipe across to pick different ones or we can hit the plus. So if there's a specific code for the color that you wanna use or RGB values, then you can enter those in up the top here or you can pick a color from the massive color wheel in here as well. So in this case here, I'm just gonna go with a dark gray and go okay. 
Now if it keeps scrolling down here, we can customize up this background or this box by adjusting the padding. So maybe we'll add a little bit more on the left and a little bit more on the right. And maybe we'll take some off the top and the bottom. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So we'll hit the tick on that. So we've got one text block in here already. Now to save us creating the next one again from scratch, we can actually just duplicate this one by selecting it and coming across to copy. And that way we've created one that is an exact copy of the first one we created. The other thing you can do that's really cool in here is you can save these as a style. So if we come over here to styles, then we can actually save this. It says here, save the current style as a new style, go okay. And this way, if you're coming back to create more thumbnails at a later date, then you can just go under styles and you can browse your styles and you can pick all of your presets in here so that you don't need to recreate them each time. So let's customize up this second one here. Let's double tap on it. Let's go on Android and go OK. Now for this one here, let's change the background color. So let's go over to background and scroll down. And with the plus, let's go and make it a blue color, something like that. And we'll hit the tick for that one to apply that. And let's duplicate that or copy that one more time. So we'll come back across here to copy and we'll edit this last one here to say updated with an exclamation mark so everyone knows we're serious. <laughs> Okay, go OK. And for this one, let's make this one here, background color. Let's make this a red and we'll go OK. Now this one here, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. The text isn't as important for updated and hit the tick. Now it looks like we need to adjust the padding on that background again. So let's come across to background, scroll down to the padding for the top and the bottom. Let's make sure that's even. So let's move these over to the side here now. And what we'll do with a lot of our titles is just rotate them a little bit so that they're not just straight titles. So to do that, there's a little semicircle under the title. So if we press on that, we can rotate that around from there to where we'd like it. Or you, with the title selected, you can come down the bottom here to rotate and you can get some more granular control over that. So let's try that one there, one above it, rotate. And the one above it, let's go the other way just to break it up a little bit. Okay, now let's bring in the image that we took while we were filming to use in this graphic. So for that, we wanna come up to the plus at the top and let's choose from gallery, go and find your image. I'm going to crop our image down so that it's just the pieces that we want without anything extra in there. And I'm going to hit okay or the tick on that one. And then with the image selected, I'm then gonna come across down the bottom here now there's actually a few different ways that you can do this in this app. If you've just got a solid color behind you, then you can just use the erase color tool. And let's enable that. And then you can go and pick the color that you want using the color picker. So let's pick your color. It's primarily that white creamy color. We can select okay. And that's done a pretty good job at removing a fair amount of that color. There are some other controls in here to dial that in, but this is really what you would use if you had your photo or your image taken on a green screen or a blue screen. So we're gonna turn that one off now and cancel out of that. In this case where a lot of that background wasn't removed, we are going to have to use the eraser tool. And in here is where we can draw out and remove the background from our image. Now, just by grabbing the eraser tool at the top here, we can start to draw on our image and you can see that it is being removed. Now we have the option to make this bigger using the slider here so that we're able to remove a greater area of this. Keep in mind that we have also cropped off this section of the image. So removing this piece over here isn't really that important. So we can use this eraser tool to get pretty close to the area that we want to get rid of. If we wanna feather this out so it's not such a hard edge, then we can soften that off with the other tool here too. If you wanna zoom in, we can press the plus button at the top here and then pinch to zoom on the image, which is what I recommend that you do if you wanna get a really high quality cutout of your background. So we'll turn off zoom. So we can keep going with that eraser tool and remove now that we're zoomed in at a greater level of accuracy, just like this. So this is the main way that I'd probably be doing it. And when you get to an area here where you need some more granular control, make your brush or your eraser a little bit smaller and then come back into those areas there to remove those sections. So you're just making it bigger or smaller as you need to. There you go, really small for this section in here. But I'm also just keeping an eye on that little preview monitor up the top corner, showing me how close I am to the edge. 
So it's really not too much of a tedious process. It's actually quite easy to get through your image here and to have quite a good cutout. Now the other tool that you got access to in here is the lasso tool. So if we select on the lasso tool here at the top, then we're able to free draw out or draw around the area that we'd like to have removed from our image. So you can see again, we're looking at that preview down the bottom right hand corner and I'm just drawing around my ear here. Again, just going through this relatively quickly. And so you wanna be fairly accurate with this, but you don't need to be 100% spot on. Let's just say that that's it. Let's remove all of that cut out from there. We'll press the little removal button here and we've now removed that section. So we can now clean that up with the eraser tool, zoom back out grab the eraser tool and we can now remove the remaining areas now that the finer detail piece around my head has actually happened or has actually been removed. So once you're done, just hit the plus button and you can see that we've cropped out that image. So really, really easy. And I did get through that pretty quick. So you can see the result or the effect that you're able to get here. So now that you've got that cut out, you can do things like add a white border or a border around that cutout and maybe increase the width of it. So we've used that look for a lot of our thumbnails, or we can turn that off, cancel out of that. You could come across and add a shadow to it. And you might go a darker color here. Actually, the white looked better. So there's some really cool, easy to use tools in here to allow you to get a great amount of control over your images. So apply that now. Okay, so now that we've got that in there, maybe we'll brighten this up a little bit. Let's go to color filters and brightness. Let's brighten that up a bit and hit the tick to apply that. Let's maybe move me off to the side a bit more. Let's reposition some of our text here. Maybe our text here is a bit big now. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. Let's bring in some other graphics. Now, obviously we're talking about YouTube thumbnails here. So let's bring in the YouTube logo. So for this, we're gonna head over to Google, search for YouTube logo. Normally what I would do here is just go to images and then find the one usually from Wikipedia, which is right over here. But in this case, if we come back over here to all and go down here, you can see that YouTube actually releases their brand resources. So their logos and stuff publicly. Now it does say here though, that while this page is here to get you started, all uses need to be approved by YouTube. Now I would think that we're probably okay using the YouTube logo in a logo on YouTube to help someone make YouTube thumbnails. It's pretty meta, but general disclaimer is use at your own risk. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this one here now. Once we've got that downloaded, we'll come back over to Pixel Lab, press the plus, and let's choose from gallery. Let's select the YouTube logo, hit the tick to drop it in. And we now have that here in our thumbnail, which we can reposition. So let's put it over here somewhere. YouTube thumbnails on Android, reposition some of these. Now, because we're talking specifically for Android here, we might bring in an Android logo. So again, we'll jump back over to Chrome, find the image we wanna use, save that to our device, come back to Pixel Lab, hit the plus from gallery, find the logo, we will crop this one down, hit the tick, scale it down, down the bottom here. Okay, we're getting pretty close now. We're just gonna hit the save button to make sure that we are saving our project. We're gonna save it as a project. Let's call it thumb, just in case something happened. Now, because this thumbnail image is about creating thumbnail images, why don't we add in a couple of thumbnail images as examples? So let's head over to YouTube. Let's open up our channel. Let's go to videos. And now let's just take a screenshot of this. Now back in Pixel Lab, let's import that screenshot from gallery, pick our screenshot but let's crop it down so that we're just grabbing one thumbnail image at a time. Now, obviously these here are going to be pretty small, so the quality isn't going to be great on them, but at the same time, we don't need them to be great quality because they're only going to be used very small. So I've selected that, hit okay. It's probably even still too big at that point. Let's shrink it down a bit more. Let's put it here, maybe we'll rotate it a little bit. We could even come across here and add a little border on it, stroke. It's enable stroke to make it white. Hit the tick. You can see we've got a little outline on that now. And let's bring another one. Hit the plus from gallery. Back to our screenshot. Let's crop it down for another one and shrink it down. Again, let's apply that stroke. There it is. Turn it on. Tick. And maybe we'll add in one more. Shrink it down. Let's put this one down here. Let's rotate it a little bit. Let's put a stroke on this one. Now you can see that those three that we've just added in are sitting on top of that picture of me. So let's come up here to the layers again, and let's move the cutout of me up to the top. Turn off layers. And you can see now that those thumbnails we've just added are sitting in behind me. 
Now as for the background that we've done nothing with yet, let's just create a simple gradient or a simple color that we can use in the background there. So it's not just the stock one on here. So I'm gonna come up to the top here to the plus. Let's just choose a shape. You get the default white shape here. Let's make it bigger. So it fills our entire area here. Let's scroll down here to where it says fill color. Let's go gradient. And you can see that we're able to create different gradient or different looks in here. And there's some presets in here as well. So even that one there could be okay. But obviously we can customize these up in here as well with the different colors and things. But that's not too bad. Let's hit okay with that one. Again, come up to the layers. Let's move that one right to the bottom. So it's down below everything and hide the layers. And you can see now we have a light blue on one side getting to a darker blue on the other side. So you can feel free to customize this up. Again, reposition everything if you need to, tweak it, make minor adjustments until you're happy with it. But I think that looks pretty good. So from here, let's save this out and upload this to our YouTube channel. So we wanna hit the save button again. Let's go save as project again, just in case we need to make any changes to this. Some V2. Now we hit save again and choose save as an image. Now the settings here should all be exactly as you need them. You want it as a JPEG. The size is correct if you'd entered it at the start like we did. So now you just need to hit save to gallery. Now you just wanna head over to the YouTube studio app to add this to your video. Come up to the top, open up videos. Let's select this video here, world's best video, the one here without a thumbnail image added. Hit on the little edit button at the top, the pencil, and then in the top left corner of the thumbnail picture there, we wanna hit edit on that. Select custom thumbnail. Go and select your new masterpiece and hit select again and make sure you hit save in the top right hand corner and that new thumbnail image is now applied and saved on your YouTube video. So now that you've got an awesome looking thumbnail, let's make sure that you're getting the best results out of your Android camera the next time you're filming. So linked on screen is a video running through our top tips for filming with Android, and also a link to download our free PDF guide to help you film amazing videos just using your Android device. So you can grab your copy and follow along next time you're shooting your videos. I'll see you in the next one.